government which sets priorities. You know, if you look at, just look at last week, on one hand you have uh, some people uh, somewhere spending billions of shillings on a party somewhere, and then the citizens are complaining of potholes, and General Museveni comes and says, we've given in six billion shillings on to fix the roads in Kampala. So it's about priorities. You know, you have all these ministers moving around in convoys and, uh, and, and whatever. We, we've been talking about <clears throat> reducing public expenditure. If you reduce public expenditure, the problems we're talking about in healthcare, in education, uh, in infrastructure can be solved. So as NUP, if you look at our manifesto and our plan, we think that uh, this city should be decongested, first of all, by you know uh, improving infrastructure, expanding the city, uh, so that you know you can have you don't have to have a concentration of people in the CBD in the central business district, um, but of course also taking uh, some services to other places so that you know de you decongest the city, you revamp the railway system, and you know many other forms of transport that you get to see in other uh, other countries. Yeah, so public transport is a big crisis in this country. Because of poor planning, uh, like, like I said, the regime <coughs> has its priorities elsewhere. They, they just simply don't care. So how did we allow our roads to become what they are now? The, the kind of mess that we're now saying we drive on what is left. We don't drive, we, we no longer drive on the left. I mean, how can how, how did we allow ourselves to reach that point? Simply because the taxpayer's money is not used for what it is supposed to be used for. It is just... Uh, used for some, for, for some other things. Yeah, General Museven is saying, now I'm somewhere building roads, now I've deployed uh, troops somewhere, they need a supplementary budget of trillions. That is where our money goes. And this is the citizens of Uganda, the one in China Mukaka, who is struggling, is the one who is paying taxes for General Museven to live that kind of life. Have you ever sat down and uh, probably considered and said if these troops were not deployed where they are, you wouldn't have a political party to talk about? Of course, uh, strategic. You, you, know, you know, you know, you know. It's uh, it's wrong uh, for, for the regime to always think that security is just about force. There, there are many things that you can do. Uh, there are many regions in the on, on the continent which are, you know, safe, which are peaceful, which are stable, without having to do what they do here. So, because we, we don't, you don't just look at security in terms of uh, army deployment, and we've also talked about. Uh, the, the, the opaqueness of these operations where citizens, not even parliament, is aware of what is going on in total violation of the law because the law says if you want to deploy our troops outside Uganda, there should be transparency. What is the objective? How many months are you going to be there or years or whatever, basically the time frame? What is the strategic uh, geopolitical objective? And those are the factors. So uh, if a regime looks at everything in terms of let's deploy, you know, sometimes these are uh, missions and operations, just like here in Kampala, that whenever there are protests, whenever uh, regime officials or security parties look at this as a way of getting some money uh, from, from the regime. And that is how, unfortunately, the, everything has been looked at in this country. Service delivery, security, everything has been monetized. Uh, people look at every position they hold as a way of siphoning public funds. And, and that is a challenge you have. All right, uh, let's look at your political party. A number of things happened there, but very fast, uh, the issue of the amendment of your constitution. This is an issue that is being debated up to now from the time this amendment actually came through. What are these amendments and how did you arrive at them? Yeah, I want the viewers to understand that we, uh, when we get, came into the leadership, NUP has been around for some time. The constitution that they've been having is a constitution of 2004. Uh, so it was high time that we made changes uh, to our constitution, our party constitution. And because initially, under Mzee um, Chivarama and other leaders, the party was really small. So it had few people, few members. Uh, I'm sure you did not even know about the party before we launched it eventually. So you found that, <clears throat> for example, the delegates conference of a party had 150 members. Now that the party is growing and uh, uh, growing in numbers with many leaders, we needed to expand that. So we increased that number to more than 500 delegates now, depending on the number of elected leaders that we, we get to have. We also realized that the constitution gave a lot of powers to the president, which we sought 
to take away. Let's first focus on the issue of the delegates. Yeah. Uh, so if you're expanding the number to 500, yeah. you're just a new party, you're mm -hmm. going through one election, people have been saying you do not have structures. Who are these delegates, the 500? And how are you going to get them? We are going to have structures. And uh, that if you look at our constitution, it says that we shall go and have structures right from the village level. So we want to have committees of 15 people in every uh, village of Uganda. And uh, uh, there are also special interest groups which should have committees at each of these levels. So at the village level, parish, sub-county, uh, constituency level, and eventually district and national level. So that is a plan. Of course, you know that we have challenges. And if you see one of the clauses that is in the constitution, it says where we are not able to fill these structures for one reason or the other, that will not invalidate the decisions of these party organs. Why are we putting that? It's a safeguard because you've seen every time we go out to build our structures, to do anything, the police comes and blocks us. The other day we were in uh, uh, Kunga Active and you saw how they treated us. I mean, everywhere you saw what happened to Honorable Susan Mugabe over the weekend uh, in Guvuma, where she was battered for simply trying to hold a Women's Day celebration event. So our the, the desire is to have... Uh, all districts, for example, represented in the delegates conference, mm. and because of gender balance or gender parity, we are saying that every district should send one male and one female. And and actually, it does not even have to be male and female because if the district chairperson happens to be female, then there will be two people, both female, representing a particular district in the delegates conference. And of course, we say that all mayors, all members of parliament, all uh, uh, leaders at different levels should be able to come to the delegates conference, which is the highest policy organ of the party. Highest policy of the organ. And I was going to ask you, what are the responsibilities of this uh, delegates conference from your side, from the structure of your party? What role does it play? So it's a delegates conference, which is the highest policy organ, and it meets once every five years, at least once every five years, unless there are need, there's need for an extraordinary meeting. And the role of the delegates conference is to give policy direction to the party first and secondly to elect members of the national executive committee, including the president, the deputy presidents, and leaders of the different special interest groups. Our neck was restructured in the new constitution, comprised of especially because we wanted a representative neck, where you must have PWDs, you have uh, women represented, you have uh, all sorts of uh, uh, categories in our society. We want them to be represented in, uh, in the national executive committee. So that is the second role. The Delegates Conference also amends the party constitution as and when uh, uh, need arises. So it is the highest organ. It also will be receiving reports from the Secretary General, for example, from different party organs, because it is the highest policy organ. And for example, when you come to election of a presidential flag bearer, it is the Delegates Conference which will have to sit and determine. Uh, who that flag bearer will have to be. All right. Let's move on and look at uh, another amendment. What other crucial decision did you take? Uh, for example, I said that uh, the current NUP constitution gave a lot of powers to the president. Uh, for example, even the Secretary General, uh, the president had uh, the power to nominate 25 people to come to the delegates conference, and the SG also 25 people to come to the, and which we think is, is, is wrong because the delegates conference should be checking the executive of the party. So we took away that power from the president and gave it to a different organ. We created the position of party chairperson and deputy party chairperson, which we will fill uh, very soon. And those are the people who will be chairing, convening and chairing the delegates conference on behalf of the party. So we, have, we, we, we are trying to broaden the leadership structure of our party. Um, of course, uh, like I said, we, we, for example, also introduced uh, an advisory council, which will comprise of former party presidents, former deputy presidents, former uh, party chairpersons, former secretaries general, uh, and, and basically senior leaders of the party, to be able to continuously give strategic direction to the party. Where they see that the party has lost track, the leadership council, the, the advisory council, should be able to sit and say, you know what, you're losing track. This is not the intended direction that the party should be taking. So we also created that organ to every once in a while check what is going on in the party and give a strategic, strategic di direction. I think the most contentious, there have been many, uh, I cannot talk about all of them now, but the most contentious has been about the term limits. And the term limits, we debated it, first of all. There was a consultative process, we debated it. Some were against them, others were in favor of them. But majority took the day. That is what democracy is about. When you say it was a consultative process, the, the people have not yet understood 
how did you culminate? How did you end up with uh, these particular amendments happening? Because in, in other processes, we know sometimes <clears throat> there is a constitution review commission, there is a committee set up to gather views, and then they come up with the concrete positions, and then they are ratified, and then passed, and then. That, that's exactly what happened. Than, uh, in fact, so what exactly uh, maybe let me use this opportunity to, to, to tell the people who don't know. You know, we set up a constitutional review committee headed by the Honorable Major Tsegona. You know, some time back, and you remember we came up and, and announced it, even at the very first retreat, we had the members of parliament. Mm. And of course, given the political environment that we have in this country, you don't expect them to be able, for example, to hold a rally in Chenjojo or in Masindi and be allowed to hold that rally and consult. So they used what you would call a rubber of cell to consult different leaders and different stakeholders within our party about the proposals. And the consultative process was long. I was the secretary to that committee, and, and definitely I know uh, the thoughts that came through and many other meetings that we've been having. So it was a long, drawn-out consultative process. And when these proposals came, they were presented, first of all, to the senior leaders of the party. And that is the president, the deputy president, and other senior leaders. They debated them, uh, removed some things, added some things, and that kind of thing. And these proposals were then taken to the National Executive Committee of the party, which also debated them. So I, I don't understand when someone tries to create an impression that there was no consultative process. We, we, and then, of course, they, they eventually went to the delegates' conference, which has a mandate. And, and I can tell you that whereas some people think these were uh, thoughts of our president, uh, President Chagulani, on some of the things, the delegates voted him out, voted, voted against his position. You know, the, the, uh, I remember some, some of the contentious matters where he thought we should take this position, and the delegates actually voted to say, let's take the other position. Why? Because in NUP, we believe in uh, servant leadership, and we, we don't believe where General Seven is someone's uh, NRM, and whatever his position becomes law. That's not what we believe in. We think that even the president, even the deputy president, uh, and every other leader should be should have an opportunity to, to, to bring their thoughts and debate freely and openly in that manner. All right, let's deal uh, with this issue of the term limit. So yeah. what exactly are these term limits? We, we, we are saying that uh, in NUP, you should not be in one position for more than two terms. Simple. That's what we are saying. If you are elected to be a member of parliament, be there for two terms, if people elect, elect you, and then go, and, and you can either go and uh, decide to go home, or you can test for another position. We are saying also that uh, if you are a party president, for example, or the secretary general of NUP, you shouldn't serve the party for more than two terms. Why are we doing this? We think that political leaders should, you know, not be in one position for so long, because we know that that has been the biggest problem Uganda has had. You know where people sit in these positions and and feel that they, they, they own them. You know, you, you after some time, you see seeing the difference between the position and the individual. Because the individual has become the position. You know, uh, and that is what we are fighting against. You have a, a General Seven who is coming, who's going to 40 years. Now, really ridiculously trying to impose his son on the nation now. So, that, that is what happens. Well, if if General Seven... The president has been very clear uh, in an interview he did with some media houses that he has not pushed his son into politics. But uh, what, what are you talking son, about? Are you, just doing uh, are you a politics. Ugandan? You are a Ugandan. I am a Ugandan. You know that uh, if you decided, even you as a media person, you just go and try to hold a rally in, in, in cavalry and see what will happen to you. And see if you'll come back with your with, with, with yourself intact, with your eyes intact or legs intact. So you're trying to do something different from what the NRM has done. Well, and then what would you tell people who think that this is, this is a, a populist move? You're, you're simply trying to appear different. And if you're not very careful, this is going to cause your political party problems. It is not populist. This, we have interrogated the problem of Uganda. If you have been a member of parliament for Kasambia or for... Chitagwenda or Kapelebiongo, wherever. If you have not done what you're supposed to do in 10 years, then, then there's a problem. We believe that in 10 years, you should have been able to fulfill your agenda. And we are saying that these limits will start operating in the next elective term because we cannot 
uh, the Lord does not act retrospectively. So we say that if you are in a position, you should serve your people knowing that you have up to 10 years to serve and then you can go on and if people think that you're a very good leader and you've been a member of parliament, they can elect you to become a mayor or to become a district chairperson. But also we, we think that you know, politics should, should not be some form of employment. Politics is service. It is a mission. It is what you do in those positions. And the problem we have had in this country <clears throat> is that politics has, because it is, first of all, the, the highest paying job. You see members of parliament earn maybe six times as much as um, the medical doctors will earn. Or uh, six times as much as an engineer will earn or something like that. So you find that everyone is clamoring to go into these positions. And once they get into those positions, they are, they are willing to do anything possible to keep in those positions. Well, you and, are a lawyer. Yeah. What you're trying to do is even very different from what the national constitution says. So we know the national constitution originally had two terms for a president, yeah. but they were now re removed. It's now an open term. Which we oppose. Which you oppose. Yeah. I am reading a comment from one of your leaders who happens to be a vice uh, president of an area where you won many seats here in Uganda. He's also mm. the leader of opposition, Matthias Mpuka, who actually seems to suggest that uh, MPs, mayors, and councillors, since they do not have um, powers to make certain decisions, they, they should be excluded from the issues of term limits. Focus on the presidency and the other top positions. One, 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 <clears throat> well, let me just clarify that it is important for people to have di divergent views. You know, you cannot be in the same home or at the same political party and have similar views. And so, uh, the fact that one of our leaders has contrary uh, opinions from what the majority decided, <clears throat> that does not actually mean, it is not bad were for, for, views, for our party. Were his views sold of course, during this process? Definitely. And he has, he, he, has, no, he has come out openly say that he was consulted. Uh, and so I don't want you to uh, drive a narrative that he was not consulted. I'm not driving a narrative. I want you to clear this. Yeah, issue. I'm trying to say that it's in he, the public domain. when he, I, at least I watched him and he was courteous to say, I was consulted on this matter. And this was my position. I will also tell you that, like I said, our president uh, lost out on some debates in the delegates conference because we had a very, very intense debate on these matters. The people are saying that this is populist. You should look at Kenya. Kenya has term limits for members of parliament, for senators, for governors. All these positions have two term limits. We have been electing members to go to IARA, the East African Legislative Assembly. There are term limits in that parliament. Isn't what going on in the, in, at IARA? So it, it is not that we are inventing something new. And like I said, uh, uh, let's give it time. Let's look at it. But my firm view is that it is the best thing we can do for our party. Because, um, first of all, like we said, these, these uh, limits are imposed on everybody, on members of parliament, on party leaders. And we're even saying that if you become president of Uganda under NUP, you cannot serve beyond two terms. We, we have made it clear. All we, all we have said is that if you're a flag bearer and you don't make it, then that does not apply to you. You, you can contest as many times if you lose. But uh, or if you're not declared, let me not say if you lose, because in this country... We know that we, there are many times when we win elections and the regime will declare someone else. Correct. Now, a constitution is supposed to be flexible. So yeah. you have now decided to introduce term limits. Are there avenues where maybe the delegates conference can take a decision in future and say, this particular clause is not popular, so let's amend it? Well, we, are, we, are, we have entrenched it, but not completely. Uh, when you entrench provisions, you make them very difficult to amend. Uh, initially, the proposal was that they should be completely uh, not amenable for, the, for, for amendment. However, at the delegates conference, it was decided that let's make the process extremely difficult. For example, we said that you need to get 50, at least 50 percent of all district executives to give you a resolution in favor of amending this provision. And then from there, you have to come to the delegates conference and get over 80 percent of the support 80%. of the delegates. Yes. Why are we doing that? We know the problems of Uganda. Tomorrow, uh, someone will be in charge of uh, this party, whether uh, we, we are still around or not, and then uh, decide to bribe people like Museveni has been doing so that they amend this. So we are saying, if you want to amend this provision, it should be very difficult to amend. And there must be clear reasons, and it should be subject to public debate. 
national debate, and there must be convincing reasons why you want to do that. All for right. now, we think that term limits are good for a country. And like I said, as a lawyer, this, you're saying that uh, the country has uh, no term limits and we're introducing them. We are, we are dealing about, we are talking about the NUP constitution. We're not talking about the national constitution or any other. Well, some, somebody might go and challenge you. No. Mm. The, the party constitution, it's like if you have an association, organization, it's your own constitution. And there's no contradiction between our constitution, the constitution the, the, of our party. The, the supreme law in this country. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. Mm. And, and as a lawyer, I can tell you that there is no, for example, if you amended something relating to how, um, to the qualifications of a member of parliament under your act, uh, under your, your constitution, that might be in, in contravention of the national constitution if it relates to, to the processes of the electoral commission. But as long as what we have amended relates to internal party processes, there is no contradiction with the constitution. All right, Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90, we need to go for a break now. When we return, we will continue looking. 2026 is coming. Uh, Mr. Uh, David Lewis Mugongoya here is already hinting on some people having taken the lead in Kavase for support for 2026. Not taken the lead. What they is not the political the lead. party they are, they are doing, NUP communal activities. doing to prepare for that particular election? But there are also squabbles. We keep on hearing people uh, apparently fighting within the party. What mechanisms are in place to actually contain this situation? Stay tuned, Radio 1 FM 90. We continue after this break. Thank <laughs> you.